If you thought the level one Google Educator exam was easy, you might be in for a bit of surprise when you take the level two test. Hi, my name is John Sowash. I help teachers and students use Google tools in the classroom. This is my review of the level two Google Educator exam. I take the exam at least once a year. I've done this every year since 2017, and I put my thoughts together so that I can help you pass the level two test as well. Now, the format for the level two test is unchanged, and if you took the level one test, you're gonna be in a good position. Uh, there's two sections, multiple choice and the scenarios. It is open book and open note, which which is uh, good. There was some confusion last year. Google changed their policy, made it closed book, and then they reversed that, but it is open book. You're welcome to use any materials or resources during the test. However, there is a time limit. So, you know, you can't just sit there and look up every answer. You need to budget your time wisely. You get three hours to complete the test. And running out of time is the number one reason that educators don't pass. So you need to go in with a plan knowing what to do. The exam fee is $25, that's unchanged, and your certification certification lasts for three years. Now, I go into much greater depth on the format, the types of questions, and some strategies on my level one review video. I'll link to that video at the end of this one and in the description, you can check it out uh, if you're interested. The level two test covers all of the products on the level one test. So that would be all the core services, Google Drive, uh, Gmail, Calendar, um, you know, sites, things like that. And some additional lesser known, less popular tools. And this is where you're probably going to want to pay attention. So if you look at this list, I mean, there's some recognizable ones, Google Maps, Google Earth. Okay, we're cool. Um, but do you use Blogger anymore? Does anybody use Blogger anymore? Well, it's on the level two test, Google Scholar, Google Books. You definitely wanna make sure that you brush up on your use of those products before you take uh, the level uh, two test. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, some study tips um, here in, uh, in just a minute. All right, let's move on to um, exam registration. Criterion is still administering the exam. You'll register through them. They'll collect the exam fee and um, provide your results and exam credentials. Results are not instant, unfortunately. It can take up to seven days to get your results. Usually sooner, it's usually three to four days for me, but just be aware you're not gonna get instant results uh, when you take, uh, take the test, it's a bummer. I take the exam every year and I decided to put together kind of my thoughts and a quick summary of what you can expect. So I take some detailed records on the types of questions uh, that are provided. Uh, here's a list of all the questions that I've received since 2017. Now, please note that this only includes the scenario questions. Uh, this does not include any of the multiple choice questions. And, you know, if you just look at these lists, um, you know, Gmail, pretty consistent. Drive, pretty consistent. Like, a lot of these are pretty consistent year to year. So, frankly, not a whole lot has changed with the level two test. If you watch my level one video, my big conclusion was it is a ton easier. The level one test is a ton easier. That is not the case with level two. Level two is still a very challenging test you need to be prepared for. Now, I wanna point out a couple of observations here, just a couple things uh, that I noticed. Um, first of all, you'll see that there's a pretty high concentration of search-related questions, four, three, four questions over the last couple of years. So again, you definitely wanna brush up on Google Search, Google Scholar, Google Books, those are all included in there. And then also, Google Sites uh, continues to be a very um, common question. Four to five questions every year seems to be pretty consistent. So those are the things that I observed about the, the questions that I received. I also want to point out what is not on the test. And this is very surprising. You will not see, at least I didn't, any questions on Google Classroom, Google Slides, Google Drawing, or Google Groups. Those are very common questions for the level one test. Um, those are tools that educators use on a regular daily basis. Unfortunately, they're not referenced on the level two test. So your knowledge of those products is not gonna push you through, push you over the, uh, the finish line for uh, the level two test. Um, the number of questions on the test has remained very consistent year over year. Uh, you can see, you know, just under 30 questions almost every year. 
and then the time that it has taken me to take the test has also been relatively consistent, somewhere between 60 and 90 minutes uh, on average. Now, again, I take these very quickly. I take them a lot, so my times are probably a little bit faster than you, I would expect an average person uh, to have. So overall, the level two test is pretty much the same as it has been in the past. Definitely more difficult than the level one test and definitely focuses on different products than the level one uh, test does. Overall, the level two test goes deeper. So when you get a question on Gmail, they're not asking you to compose a message or you know attach a file. They're asking you to go into settings and change things and update things, turn things on. The level two test, forces you to dive into the tool below kind of the standard options and look at um, some additional things. So keep that in mind. And that is particularly true when we look at tools um, like um, the Chrome Web Store. So installing extensions, installing add-ons into Google Drive, those are really common questions on the level, uh, level two test. Search was huge. Um, if you haven't looked at it recently, make sure you check out Google Books, Google Scholar, Advanced Search. Um, there's a good chance you'll see those uh, tools referenced on the level two test. If you are getting ready to take the level two test, I would strongly encourage you to download a copy of my free study guide. You can click down over here to get a copy of that list, everything you need to know in the level two test. And if you have not yet watched my level one video, go ahead and click up here and you can watch the level one video which has even more tips on passing your Google Educator exam. Good luck on your test.